if you had to spend 170,000 Ethereum to keep your community alive, would you spend it fast or would you spend it slow? That is the question for Richard Hart. And this is the Tron chart, friends. If you've been paying attention to my channel, like, subscribe. I've been speaking to you about the Tron chart. It might be the future of what Pulse Chain looks like. Pulse Chain, Pulse XX. Now, I want to make some distinction to you. Tron is founded by Justin Sun. Justin dumped $300 million of his coin up here. He did not buy back the coin here. Okay, the only reason why Tron went up is purely because in this moment, this was 15x in the last cycle. This distance to that distance is 15x. Now, that's a failure because Ethereum went up 40x and then Tron only went up 15x. Now, why is that a failure? Well, it's because Ethereum is a blue chip index. It did a 40, you only did 15. So pretty much the only reason why Tron was able to go up at all in the first place is because of basically Bitcoin and Ethereum rising up together, okay? But then something magical happened. So Tron then drops friends 75%, which actually is magical for an altcoin. But it's not really that magical. It's because it only went up 15x. So dropping 75%. If Tron went up 45x, as much as Ethereum, and it dropped back to that price, it's down 92%. So basically in a nutshell, this euphoria could have went up super high could have went up medium, and it, but actually ended up going low. It could have got like level one, so you could write it up here, level one, level two, or level three euphoria. Okay, so, so basically one, two, three, you got basically the, the crappest one, okay? Now, what ends up happening is the this is where the magic begins. It is this walk up, all right? It is literally walking up here. And I mean, the bull market, we haven't seen euphoria, Coinbase app store ranking. I mean, like Tron vents, there's no meme coin community and stuff on there. I'm sure there are junk coins, like or junk. I'm sure there are communities and stuff on there, but you're not seeing anything like Soilana. You're not seeing any of these other big uh, DeFi serious stuff that are on there. Yet still, there's a community. There are believers of Tron. Of course, it's more targeted towards the market, uh, the, the Asian market itself more because a lot of people, friends, they're using Tron to basically just send stable coins throughout Asia. Uh, moving across all the government rails and uh, basically, yeah, just sending uh, tether between themselves because they, they need stable coins. It's one of the biggest use cases of crypto, funnily enough. All right, so I have the question now here for you. If you are Richard Hart, you had 170,000 ETH for the Pulse Chain community, how would you spend it? Now, obviously, I have the first point. I'm going, look, duh, how would you spend it for yourself? What you would do is you would deploy all of it in one second and then you dump and you walk away. But if you are Richard Hart, how would you spend it? What would you do? Now, obviously, we know he's long Ethereum. We know as Ethereum's price goes up, you know, 7,000, 10,000, hopefully higher, hopefully super high, we know there's going to be rotations in. But how much would you rotate? Where would you rotate? Would you do it all immediately? Would you do all of it? You have to be along for the ride. That's why you're either in or out. He makes the decisions. I'm going to trust that he's basically looking at all the field of crypto and he's seeing what works. So here's the thing. We don't even have one example in crypto where your coin is basically done well in a bear market. Except as an altcoin, except Ethereum. That's it. Ethereum is the only one. But that's Ethereum, man. You're a freaking unicorn. We only have Ethereum friends. If you remove Ethereum, you don't even really have nice things for Ethereum. I mean, like it, it, ETH BTC dropped fifty percent, which that's perfect by by like uh, other standards in terms of like how much everything else drops. You have the chart here, right? So how much does ETH BTC drop this year? Is twenty twenty one actually the peak? It comes back down, drops. Yeah, actually thirty five percent. It hasn't been able to move much, but. This is the God chart. This is the second cycle chart. It, it, it looks terrible here, but actually from a perspective of where it starts, this is a, a great chart. It's just taken so long now. And that's the only example we have, but it's Ethereum, man. You, you're the hotbed of innovation. You have everybody there, big first mover advantage. You can't replicate that. Everyone's trying to replicate that. So now basically you're caught between a rock and a hard place. What do you do? If you spend too much, you will paint the chart very, very high, but then... You've basically, you've ejaculated too much. You've got nothing left. You can't go for round two. 
And I can bring up the Pulse Chain price chart to show you this. Uh, basically, let's put on a log chart, the log chart of COPE, of course. So you can actually have a look at it like this, friends. We can actually just imagine our minds. You could just do like a scenario where, hey, I'm just going to literally blow everything out, blow all the money, and then see years later. Okay, and we might get something like that. It could get, we could. That's 100. That's that's just enormous amount. Okay, maybe we don't even get something like that. We just, just we just... Have some fun here. Maybe we get around 30x day one sec. I'm just guessing. This is like 100x from here. So that would be around here. Obviously, would love that. But then, like, you might get, like, some outrageously deep bear market, right? Just because that might happen, man. That might happen, right? Where you drop, like, 94 95% all over again. This is what it would look like on a linear chart like that. There you go. Bang. Like <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Then it just comes back down. All right. You got to remember... Markets are a moving target. So there are some things you just can't control, like the cycle and stuff. But then there are other things like you are now, remember you're the leader. You're, if you're Richard Hart, you got to decide this. Do you throw all that 170,000 Ethereum to get Pulse, PulseX, EHEX, PX, Inc., all of whatever, the whole ecosystem, do you throw it all in? Do you save some? If you throw it all in, let's, talk, let's think about the benefit of throwing it all in. Now, we're going to be honest here. Maybe he finds a way to take a third. That could be one scenario where he finds a way to take, he puts 170,000 ETH. Now, full speculation, friends, is obviously full, full total, total guessing. He gets a way where, I don't know, somehow selling or limit orders, whatever the hell it is. He finds a way to 170,000 ETH goes in. He gets 60,000 for himself. And then the rest is probably the 100x for everyone. And then he just lets the market play out. That's one scenario. Okay. Another scenario is not thinking about how high it could possibly go, but trying to survive for the next five plus 10 years. That's another scenario. And if he does do that, that's why I brought up this Tron chart. It might do that. That is another case where you never get peak euphoria. You come back down to a floor. It looks like crap for another two years. And then we just start walking up. And by the way, friends, this is a long time, by the way. This is like, this would be 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029. You see that? That's what, That would be the same replica of that. And obviously it's not up to me and you, but that is another possibility. What's better? Because we've run his scenario now. Now, where does it all come from? Remember, he's a good marketer, good for branding. He, he understands the game. When Richard did the pump for Hex, just to remind everybody, okay, so this is, if you go check out Hex USG chart trends, you can just see Hex did a 10,000 X, okay? It actually did a 10,000 X from the bottom here. Sweet, there you go. It's actually 10,000 X, okay? And there was, yes, it was 5 million market cap here and it went to non-origin address 5 billion with a B up here. And then, yeah, we did the big, 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 big smackdown. Now, if you combine the prices, it's around here. So you're down 98, 99%. You're getting some yield. Okay, we get that part. But the whole reason that 10,000X was such a focal point number, it was great for marketing because no one had ever seen such a number. No one ever seen that. But it was interesting, even he would say, yeah, you have seen that, dude. Uh, Bitcoin has done a million X, but no one talks about it. Shiba Inu in the last cycle did a 1.3 million X. Huge. It did a 1 million X, man. That's insane. It literally did. It's user base, and I've checked Metcalf's law. It worked out. We know from Metcalf's law, if you increase a user base by 1,000 X, then you will get the price pump will be 1,000 squared. And that's a million X. That's exactly what happened to Shiba Inu. They started off, you can see it, they had about uh, 1,000 holders, and then it went to 1.3 million by the end of 2021. And I, I still remember this, friends, because I did Metcalf's Law, and I have all the, I think I have the screenshots to show you. So Shiba Inu had, down here it had, literally, actually, let's check it out, put it on a three-day chart. Yeah, they started off with 1,000 holders, it's like one of the greatest miracle runs of all time. Uh, beginning of 2021, they had a thousand holders here, and they had. Can you imagine that, man? They had a thousand believers here. They had 1.3 million believers up here. 
That is a one million X from that. That is just that's can't believe I can't believe Metcalf's law worked on Shiba Inu in one year. It happened fast. This is nuts. So that's why adoption is key. Abandonment doesn't matter what your coin does. Okay, if people abandon, it's going to zero. And also, it doesn't matter what your coin does. If people join, your community's got value. It's beautiful. Works in your favor. You don't even need to produce cash flow. You don't even need to produce cash flow. Important. Bitcoin doesn't produce cash flow. You just have people in the network. Okay, so if you are rich at heart or a whale who wants to foster long-term growth of a chain, you would probably give it the Tron chart, which is what I'm looking at down there. You would probably give, you'd probably give it give that to the people, wouldn't you? You would, even though like, what do we want for our own personal gain? We want to, hey, pump up heaps, make it up three, go 300 extra and walk away. That's what most people would want, same as every other coin, but... You might be fighting a lot of people along the way. Um, caveat though, right? Tron, friends, that Tron chart, as I mentioned to you earlier, Justin, okay, so Justin, after selling $300 million of Tron, he didn't buy back the coin here. All right, he didn't buy back the coin here at all. He just bought Ethereum. So he bought Ethereum, sold Ethereum at the last top around there with the Ethereum Foundation, He's made a couple of billion. Oh, what a swing trader. Just, oh man, that's insane. He's sitting on a couple of billion dollars and he's still long Ethereum now. Now, we don't know. Is he going to pump Tron or something? We don't know. We don't know. I mean, like, does he even need to pump Tron? There are people who believe in Tron. This thing is freaking walking up. Is it even him buying now? I don't know. I don't even think so. But look, the tr Tron's market cap, friends, about things about six to eight billion. So, Yes, it's fascinating just to see what, what the hell is going on. No one in crypto is talking about it, right? Because a lot of people, um, when they see that, first thing, your reaction, oh, are you telling me to buy Tron? No, no, I'm telling you to buy anything, not financial advice. We're telling you we can learn from this, man. There are great lessons to learn from that. Um, so you basically, you don't get as much of a pump, but then you're stable on the jump and you're growing organically. You're coming back to your baseline growth line, okay? And... If you're trying to look at the core of the issue, the core of the issue is this. We now live in a world where 100X doesn't even hit people anymore because there are meme coins that do 100,000X as they start from tiny numbers. We saw it with Pepe, Dog We've Hat. Dog We've Hat literally did a 40,000X from 100K market cap to 4 billion, 40,000X. Pepe did it like 1 million X. Uh, all these coins, Joe Burden coin did uh, 32,000 X. All, did all these numbers, these Xs, they don't hit. They just don't hit. They used to hit because Richard, he was like, that was a marketing point. But now I will tell you this, right? I will tell you for a fact, the one thing that will make people respect your coin is if it can rally in a bear market. That is the one thing. By the way, Tron's got respect now. It's going up. It's going up. So it's respect for me. I'm ahead of the curve. I'm ahead of the trend. Yeah. Okay. Now if XRP can go up, but see XRP is liquidity linked. That's much bigger. It's tough. It's tough. There's only one coin in crypto that goes up in a bear market, friends. Her name is Bitcoin. It is the most critically tough job in crypto to get an altcoin to actually go up in a bear market. It's near impossible. You are so tied to the cycle. You are liquidity linked. Yes, the stability, it's interesting, right? You're coming here for the mad gains. So going up in a bear market, it's now considered basically taboo to think about something like that. Why? It's because you're here to change your life. Technically, you shouldn't care about bear market stuff. Technically, because you're here for like sick gains. You're here for like, hey, I'm here to make a thousand X. I don't care what happens in a bear market. Like I'm, I'm supposed to be here for the bull market. After seeing... What you've gone through for the past three and a half years since April 2021 top, do you have that same opinion? I can tell you right now, hundreds of millions of people in crypto are now looking at that bear market with the most PTSD trauma you can ever imagine. They are so scared. I can tell everyone, we are, we're all terrified of going through this for another three, four years. Like, there's just... It's like you're a Vietnam War veteran, basically. You've just seen too many limbs blown off by this point. You just, you're, your brain's fried. You, everything's just fried. You just, you, the terror. Now, would you even believe it if a coin could go up in a bear market? Would you even believe it? 
Now, here's the thing, Vince. I have, there, there's a special case out here. There's, there's always, you know, there's always that one special case. And that special case is actually Binance, okay? Binance, BNB, was able to be strong in our bear market. Look at this. Check this out. Bitcoin halving goes back to the top, rare case, but the actual true ve measure of Binance, BNB, BTC, is this. Friends, look at this, okay? BNB was able to go up in 2022. Like, this is unheard of. BNB broke its top in 2022 by 57% against Bitcoin. Why? Why? Because all the trading activity of everyone trading on Binance were getting destroyed, losing money, paying all the fees to the exchange, and they're taking all the fees of everyone, and they're dumping all the coins, coins as profit, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and Polygon, all the other coins as profit, and they're just rotating it into BNB. They're keeping BNB bid. See? So this was the actual top of BNB up here. It comes up, breaks the high. Here comes the CZ FUD. CZ gets arrested and all these, and now it's come back here. But this chart is actually amazing. It is only down 27% from the top. But it's a special case because you're a unicorn exchange who's rotating profits in. So you're relying on like just some sweaty Asian dude. There's a fan blowing, you know, with like the, the streamers. And he's probably smoking a cigarette in a diaper. And he's basically, you know, he's got like all the cigarette ash on the keyboard. He's just typing away. The keyboard's gone yellow now by this point. And they're just, you're basically betting on him eating his Hot Pockets that he's going to rotate the money in. Okay, that's the image you need. You're like, hey, what if this guy just, I don't know, decides to like not rotate for like a year? You don't know. You don't know. And by the way, Binance don't admit they do this because that is technically admitting that there are expectations that profits will be put into this coin. Okay, so it's complete faith. That's just, it's crypto, man. It's, it's, it's it, right? It's, it's got a cult. It's its own cult. It's people, they believe in CZ. They believe in CZ. They believe in Binance, right? So interesting. Interesting how it all works. By the way, with Pulse Chain, that's why we have a buy and burn. Just to let you guys know, okay? He saw, obviously, friends, Richard Hart, he, he, he saw like, oh, Binance, you're probably protating in. You've got a strong coin. And Uniswap, you've got the technology, but you didn't even do tokenomics at all. Let me go put in the buy and burn and I have, you know, I bought bought and burned 4.71% of the total non-origin address supply. So the long-term vision we're hoping is that buy and burn on the PulseX exchange continuously just chews up PulseX, makes it scarce over time. And then Pulse, EX, PX, Inc., everything linked to it gets dragged up by the ecosystem because PulseX, that's the scarce asset getting like chewed up over time. And, you know, you can actually see it as well happening in real time as well. When you're looking at the PulseX chart, you can change to the PulseX to Pulse ratio. Now, we don't know if someone's got some action doing it here, but you can see this is one of the most expensive DEXs in the entire world. It is, it is the most expensive DEX, okay? So it's, it's at a 0.54 ratio, 54% of the size of Pulse, but it's for good reason. It's got the literally the best tokenomics in the whole goddamn game. This is literally buying and burning every minute of the day. It's literally buying. It's like, hey, buy. No more inflation. No inflation. No secret VCs. No nothing. Just chew it up. Chew it up. So it's beautiful to see. Okay. So you have all these elements working at the same time. So I've thrown you these little unicorn cases. Yeah. Um, and now trying to figure out what Richard would do. Ne nearly impossible. Okay. He, he might go, hey, I think 2021 was a success. Let me just repeat the same thing. Let me just rotate all the Ethereum in. And then if we need to raise money in the next bear market for another thing, we'll do it all over again. He might say that. Or he might tweak his strategy of late. He might say, hmm, maybe 10,000 X wasn't needed for Hex. Maybe I should have stopped at 1,000 X. Maybe that, so if you want to know, friends, let, let's, let's see what would happen if Hex actually stopped at 1,000x. So in, if it stopped that 1,000x gain from that bottom, because you, you have no idea about these numbers anyway, they're like, oh, that, that sounds like a big number, right? Um, instead of hitting 55 cents, it would have stopped at 5 cents, okay? So you pretty much, it would have stopped here. So you just literally erase this whole move up here, all right? You just remove all of this. And instead, you would have got this chart where hex goes up to five, comes back here, and then you have the bear market, 
Let me come back down and then we are here today. Okay, so let's put on a linear chart. That's what it will look like. Now it's hard to see, but if I actually zoom in and show you, that's like, that. see, that's just the big chart. You have no idea, right? Imagine like, you don't know what a 10,000x is. It stops at 1,000x. You see, it comes back down. But if you want to see how much it drops down, look, it, look, if we only hit 5 cents, the combined hex price total, you're down 88%. And to be honest, it's kind of where it should be. You should only be down like 88% with your inflation and everything else. Why are you down 99%? You had the dilution effect from Pulse Chain, Pulse X, all the other coins. And speculation on my behalf, he pushed it up to prove a point. And to prove a point, he probably also believed it would work. He's like, well, these people are locked in. They've demonstrated to me that they stake long term. And yes, Fed raises rates, bear market comes, okay? So it is what it is. Like knowing the information at the time, you don't know. But I guess if, if you could go back in time, that's, that's what I would conclude. By the way, I'm not a billionaire. He's obviously smarter than me and you. He knows what he's doing, okay? So whether he's looking out for himself as well, but yes, he's obviously the smart guy here. Right? We're just peanut brains. We don't know what the hell is going on. But yeah, would, what would you have done, friends? Would you have stopped at a five cents? Because yeah, he probably thinks, hmm, 10,000x, man, that was too much. Maybe a thousand X, because these people don't appreciate ten thousand X. And 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 just to let you know from all the on-chain stuff, everybody dumping above five cents all the way up here, total grifters. That's the perception of the pulse chain community to them. Hey, basically you dumped and left. You just you you've you've gone, okay? But that's free markets, man. That's free markets, okay? So ultimately, you're not gonna know the answer. I'm not gonna know the answer, but I've given you two perspectives. One is he just goes, hey, 2021 was totally a win. Let's repeat that again. All right? He's like, hey, corrupt SEC. That's the reason why the thing went down. Let's just throw it in again. You know? What do you think is going to happen? Do you think he's going to do it again? Do you think he's going to tweak it? What would you tweak? Are you going to leave some for the next bear market? Here's one thing as well, friends. You can't throw money in a bear market into a coin and reprice it up. People have tried it. People have tried it, okay? You get you get this pump and dump chart. So people have tried throwing in money into a bear market. You get up and then smack, okay? The market's too smart. You, you can't do that. That's why what Tron is going through is like, everyone's just got question marks everywhere. Like, you know, but when we can figure out that, um, when we can figure out that solution, Crypto is going to be in a much better place. The only problem is if there's a solution and a formula. Do you even want to be in crypto by that point as aggressive in altcoins because a lot of the growth is priced out? So we don't know ultimately where it all ends. And having all these question marks and like shadows and all these dark alleyways, it, it makes it better for our upside potential. That's why we're getting this 50% per year compounding growth rates, assuming the four-year cycle keeps continuing from that global liquidity index. So far, so good though. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, all. Catch you the next one.